What's up everyone? In this episode of Project No Secrets, we are ripping the subframes out so we can send them off to get blasted, modified, strengthened and powder coated and continue on with our suspension development. So believe it or not, this is the first time we've had the R33 GTR up on our hoist. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look underneath, see what's damaged, see what's in good condition, see what's dirty and see what we need to do. But most importantly, we need to get those subframes out, completely disassemble them and we're going to go and get everything cleaned up, replaced, strengthened, modified, etc. and take you on that journey. There's a lot to do under there, so let's get started. All right, starting up the front, the front subframe doesn't appear to have any damage, which is good, so it's mostly going to be a clean up. A couple of little tabs have been welded on, probably to hold aero and front diffusers in place. Um, it has R34 GTR alloy front lower control arms. Uh, probably did that with the whole it's lighter to put them on, but there's no adjustment. So, you know, catch 22, I don't really want to use them. Looks like it's still got a stock sway bar, surprisingly. So that'll be getting ditched. Um, the uprights need to be completely pulled apart, refurbished. I'll have to put new hubs in because it hasn't had any drive shafts in it for a long time and these tend to collapse the hubs when that happens. It's getting all new everything, suspension arm wise, so that's pretty easy. Um, looking underneath, other than the holes that we already knew that were here in the chassis, looking further underneath, it's had some brackets welded on to hold the under tray and stuff, but the actual, believe it or not, the rails are actually in <laughs> really good condition. Actually, probably some of the best condition I've seen except for these little tabs and stuff that have been welded on that will probably cut off. The seals are terrible though. They've been pushed up and crushed in the front. We'll have to fix those up. It's had some weird stuff welded on here and there. We've definitely got some chassis repair work to do in a couple of spots, but down the center in between the chassis rails is actually pretty good. So most of it's repairable, so that's not a big deal. Factory fuel tank's still here, but it didn't have a top on it. I don't know if they used it or not. It's missing bolts holding the rear subframe in for the extra support brackets that bolt into the body. Not a big deal for holding the subframe in, but obviously it's part of the rigidity of the car. The brace is still here, which is good, but it is missing some bolts and stuff, but we'll sort that out. So the fuel tank looks all right, but we're still gonna get it out, clean it, double check it, etc., cetera, um, and work out exactly what we're gonna do with that. Brace on the rear subframe is still here, but to be honest, it's kinda gonna become pointless for us. All it does is it attaches where it, uh, the rear subframe joins to the body of the car at the front, comes back up to this back attachment point and then it joins to the body here. I think the whole idea is to try and tie the rear end of the body uh, to this section and the subframe, but we're going to be cutting this floor out and going a flat floor up here. So where this attaches become pointless and really it just gets in the way and it's heavy. So we are going to get rid of this brace um, because we are going to reinforce the subframe, make it stronger and we've got a roll cage. So it's just not needed anymore. So there's two approaches you can take to get out the subframe. One is to leave everything intact either put something underneath it, such as a table or a couple of milk crates, etc. Undo where it attaches to the body, undo the shock, undo the brake lines and handbrake, and then basically raise the car off the subframe. Um, or you can disassemble everything one at a time in the car. There's pros and cons for both. Uh, you can get to everything easier if you drop it out and it feels easier. But on the flip side, if it's in the car, you've actually got a lot more leverage. So when you want to undo bolts and things like that, you can kind of hang off the car a lot better. So. Uh, it depends which way you're more comfortable doing. So I've already put WD-40 through every single bolt in here. Uh, we're gonna drop the whole thing out just cause it's a bit more interesting to look at. So let's do it. All right, a tip for young players, if you're taking the rear subframe out of the car, just be really careful, because I've seen people do it and the car goes to tip off the hoist. Um, what I've done is basically attached a chain with a couple of bolts where one of the braces used to be, wrap that around the leg, bolted that together, and then I'm gonna run the chain to the other side, do the same on the other side, so that if for any reason we're working on the car and it wants to tip, 
um, the chain will stop it from doing that, so you at least get a chance to see it coming. It's actually on there pretty tight, so it ain't going nowhere. We've all seen those YouTube videos in other countries where people get hurt with hoists, so um, yeah, pretty important. When you take the subframe out, do this. It's only got a dummy engine in it, but it's still enough to make it very front heavy, so safety first. Now something I wanted to share with you guys as we strip this subframe down is there's actually more reasons to change over to a solid subframe bush than just having a solid rear subframe. If you have a look at the factory bush here, the metal part that holds the bolt in actually sticks out by 25 millimeters. So by putting in a solid subframe bush that sits flush or even slightly above the rear subframe, it actually raises the subframe relative to the body. Now essentially what that does is allow you to lower the car 25 millimeters without moving the arms in any way. So it kind of does the same thing as putting a roll center adjuster or a drop spindle onto your actual upright. So in other words, you get better geometry in your rear suspension and it's pretty straightforward and has plenty of other bonuses as well. Now the reason I got the rear subframe apart as fast as I possibly could by basically letting everything just fall off it is because this has to get some frequent flyer miles done over the next week to get it done. So it has to go over to Grim Performance today to get the bushes cut out. Shocker of a job, but Dennis says he's done a heap of time so he's going to do it. Then it has to go over to get uh, sandblasted or soda blasted to take all the gunk and everything off it back to bare metal. Then it goes back to Grim Performance so that it can have the modifications done to the lower pickup point as well as have all the reinforcement braces welded in. Once that's done, it then has to go to the powder coaters to get powder coated. Then it has to go back to a suspension shop to have the solid bushes pressed in before it can finally come back here and I can start reinstalling all the suspension arms. Um, while this is away, I'm also going to be getting new knuckles for it. I'm going to get new handbrake shoes. Uh, I'm also going to get the uprights cleaned up and powder coated as well. So basically the entire rear end is going to be brand spanking new. R33 GTR rear subframe is back from having the bushes removed and being blasted. Now it is a blank canvas to be strengthened and modified. Why do we want to do that? Well, to be honest, the Nissan welds are actually pretty crap um, and these subframes have been known to crack and flex a little bit. So reinforcing them is a good idea when you start putting solid bushes in and you want to go racing. Um, and I also like to modify Nissan rear subframes to help with suspension geometry. How do I do that exactly? Well, it's actually really simple. Basically, we get the front lower control arm pickup point and we add another one to it about 20 to 30 millimetres lower down, depending on which model. Uh, R32 lower control arms sit quite aggressively like this for anti-squat um, and then an R33 isn't as bad, so we don't need to have as much adjustment in that front lower control arm. But it's a mod that we did to Jet 200 many years ago and helps with traction. So essentially, a new lower control arm pickup point uh, on a, any Sylvia or Skyline uh, is going to help you with traction by helping it squat more because they have anti-squat built in from factory. But if you look at an S13 and an S15, totally different. Look at an R32 and an R34, different. So they basically, over time, took that anti-squat out of the car for some reason. Um, that's why the subframes are a bit different between each model. So we're going to custom make a new pickup point for the front lower control arm. Now to reinforce it, we've got the GK Tech uh, reinforcement kit for the rear subframe. However, this is designed for all Skyline and Sylvia, but it's a little bit different on GDR as they normally have the Hikus there that you remove. And then if you want to put something like a Hikus bracket like this, um, you can't use all of the GK Tech reinforcements. So this bad boy is pretty easy. One bolt just goes through where the old Hikus system used to bolt up to. The other bolt lines up 
with the bolt hole, hole that's already here uh, on the subframe and basically that becomes the new point at which you have uh, your tie rod at the back basically link up to. So that's how that works, pretty straightforward. Now because of that, not all of the reinforcement bits can be used. So this bit that normally gets welded here for reinforcement, that won't allow the fitment of our Hikus removal kit. So basically, we don't use this part in the reinforcement kit for the rear subframe. We'll probably do our own welds and do our own reinforcement. The easy bit is this part. This, this basically goes where the traction rod uh, cross member sort of bit sticks out. That can actually flex and be a bit weak. This just gets welded down in here, like that. And that reinforces where the traction rod joins up. You have another one here. This little bracket goes into where the camber arm joins up and basically reinforces that bracket as well. Basically just boxes it off to make it stronger. Uh, the next part here, this is for bracing the lower control arm rear pickup point, but we won't be able to use this one, which is for the front. So, because we're custom making a new pickup point. And then obviously, the last thing that we'll do once we get all of this done and powder coated is press in the new solid bushes for the subframe and for the diff. So now we're heading off to Grim Performance because uh, Dennis can weld a lot better than me. Let's go. So who ever thought that a giant piece of metal from under the car could be so pretty? But for me, it looks so good because of the engineering behind it. Now, once Dennis from Grim Performance had finished the fabrication work, we obviously needed to cover up all that bare steel so it doesn't rust. So we got the entire thing powder coated by Produced Auto down the road from us. Tommy does a great job. Very good finish, he cleaned a lot of it up as well, so that's why it looks so good. Uh, after that, we took it to Pettis to get the solid GK Tech subframe bushes and diff bushes pressed in. Diff bushes are pretty self-explanatory, they just press in and replace rubber bushes from factory. Uh, the other thing is you need to look at, with these GK Tech subframe bushes, they actually press in from the bottom. So this little lip and section here is at the bottom, that needs to be there, otherwise you actually bottom out on the thread when you put it back in the car. Uh, the other reason is the subframe bushes are actually flush on the top side of the subframe and what that means is when you go to put it in the car, the subframe will now actually go right up against the body when usually from factory there's a giant rubber bush that sits there that spaces the subframe away from the body by over 15 millimeters. So you actually get a lot of roll center correction uh, by putting this. In other words, you can lower the car 15 mil without touching the geometry at all. So that's pretty good reason alone to put the GK Tech solid bushes into your rear subframe. Uh, you can then use shims to adjust the squat or anti-squat, but because we've dialed more squat into the car by modifying our front lower pickup point, uh, we're not gonna mess with those shims, we're gonna use all the roll center adjustment possible. So all up, our modified rear subframe is stronger, looks better, looks new, uh, has solid bushes, we get roll center correction, and we get more squat by getting rid of the anti-squat in the lower control arm. So this is, to me, something you should do to every R chassis and every S chassis rear subframe. It's been done to Jet 200, some of this has been done to our GDR, but essentially we do this to all R and S chassis cars, and you should too.